Hi everyone. So, I've never done this before, but I guess we're going to start off with my first ever YouTube video. So, I guess we'll start off with everybody's favorite, a good old reptile room tour. So we're actually going to start this room tour over here, in this cage over here. This 10 gallon houses my African fire skink, Moculus Fernandi. Now for the purpose of this video, he's been put inside of this container just for ease of access. I have been cleaning his enclosure recently, so he's in there for now. Um, um, yeah. So yeah, he, or... Whatever he is, I'm not sure. He's actually unsexed. This fire skinks in general are pretty notorious for being difficult to sex, so we're just calling him a him for now. Uh, we'll see what he turns out to be in the future. Uh, he's actually going through a shed cycle right now, so if you look at him, if he lets me look at him. So yeah, his colors are nowhere near as vibrant as they normally are. And, oh, oh, well, you know, bringing him out into the light, you can see that even though he's quite a bit duller than he normally is, I'll certainly insert some pictures and videos to show you what he looks like normally, he is an absolutely gorgeous little skink. And he's not fully grown. As you can see, he's still got quite a bit of growing left to do. He's going to get about... Uh, 14 inches long as an adult, probably. Something like that. And he'll probably lose these bright blue tail. And yeah, he's a gorgeous little animal. I'm super, I'm super happy to be working with him. Definitely can't wait till he's fully grown. And uh, forgive the shaky climate. He is quite fast. You know, despite these stumpy, stumpy little legs. If it'll focus for me. Despite these stumpy little legs, he is very fast. Now he's currently feeding on small mealworms and little pinhead crickets. And normally he chows them with pretty good gusto, but he's going through shed right now. So because he is going through a shed right now, we are going to Put him back inside of his cage and we're just going to talk about a setup for a little bit. So this little fella is currently housed in a 10 gallon terrarium, which is, would not be something I'd recommend for an adult of his species, but because he is still quite small, it works for him. He's got a basking lamp and a UVB up there. While there is some debate as to whether or not fire skinks require UVB, I'm choosing to provide mine with it because I figure it won't. Because it won't hurt if he does. He has a warm hide and a cool hide, as well as a pretty large water bowl. It's big enough that if he wants to, he can bathe in it. Just some leaves in case he wants to some cover when he's above ground. And he's got a nice deep layer of substrate that he can burrow down into. To the left of the fire skink and to the and past this empty terrarium, we come to the little crown little blue jewels of the reptile room. These are my three line Lacertas, Lacerta trilineata. These guys are also referred to as Balkan green lizards. These are truly little gems of my little reptile room. These guys are always out and about. This little fella right here is my male. His name is Bean because of his bright green and blue coloration. You can kind of see him behind there. That's him. And over to the left of Bean, we actually have Peanut. She's my female. She's a little more shy than Bean is, and she's probably underneath her water dish, which is exactly where she is. Hi, girl. So we're just going to leave her be. She's a little more shy than Bean is, so... 
She'll probably won't grace. She won't grace us with her presence as much. Bean and Peanut are currently being fed a diet of mealworms and superworms. Bean will probably take it right there. As you can see, they chow their food down with gusto. They're always hungry. Uh, they're currently being housed in this Thrive 40 gallon front opening terrarium. It is divided down the middle because while these two are a breeding pair, they're not quite old enough for breeding yet, but that hasn't stopped them. <laughs> so for their own safety, we are keeping them separated. As you can see, Bean is loving his superworms. These guys have a Thrive 100 watt heat lamp that provides them with all the heat they need, as well as an Arcadia Desert light. This provides them with you. This is a diurnal species, so they do require quite a bit of UVB to keep them happy and healthy. This is a gorgeous species. I'm super excited to be working with them. They're fairly handleable, I say, as Bean kicks a chomp on my finger, but <laughs> they got a lot of personality to them, and once they're out, they're okay with handling. Peanut's not as good with handling, but she's all right. Because they're also known as Balkan Green Lizards, and although these guys, this particular subspecies that I'm working with, isn't as green, they are still gorgeous lizard lizards. They're full of personality. Now that Bean's head is full and is trying to pick the substrate out of his mouth, we're actually going to go down a level, past another level of reptile supplies and empty enclosures, down to this enclosure. This is actually a bioactive enclosure which currently houses my adult female crested gecko. Corylophus ciliatus. This bioactive enclosure has three main plants. It has a small spider plant up here, a large pothos, which has done extremely well, and a snake plant in the back, which Ray frequents. I believe if I shine it down there, she could potentially be visible. I don't actually know, but that is the spot where Ray is typically found. She's also got a couple of branches for climbing. A little plastic reptile rock thing in case she wants to hide and a nice layer of leaf litter which also serves as food and hides for her cleanup crew. She currently has springtails, dwarf white isopods, and orange and giant oranges. And although they probably won't grace us with their presence, they're there. And they just help keep the enclosure nice, clean, and bioactive. While Ray probably won't grace us with her presence, I will most definitely provide some footage about her. Ray was the first reptile I ever owned, actually. I picked her up from a from a woman in Summerside, actually, who was getting out of breeding crested geckos and need to find her geckos some home. So I took her in. I actually housed her in this exoterra over here. Not this specific bioactive, but something like this until she was upgraded into here. And now she's housed in this. So yeah, speaking of, to the right of Ray is another empty exoterra. This is another live planted enclosure. Uh, there's currently nothing living in here now. Uh, both of my exoterras are empty, but hopefully someday we'll be able to put someone in here and get some projects worked on. Right front and center of the reptile room is Jeff. Jeff is an adult male Taiwan beauty snake. He's currently the biggest snake I own at seven feet long. Uh, he does have a bit of an attitude, so he's not going to be coming out. But... As you can see by some of the footage I'm probably putting in, he is a absolutely gorgeous snake. Uh, his backstory is, what well, I was at the New Brunswick Reptile Expo and the guys I got him from, they had actually bought him in an attempt for hope for breeding him actually, but 
Unfortunately, they're female. Unfortunately, she failed to thrive in captivity, and unfortunately, she wound up passing away, so the people I got her from decided to sell them because they were getting out of Taiwan baby snakes, so they sold them, and I picked them up, and now he's here. Now, obviously, obviously this enclosure is not big enough for a snake of this size. It is not his permanent enclosure. This exoterra currently serves as a temporary housing for him until a bigger setup can be bought and built or built. We're not entirely sure what we're going to do yet. And, so yeah. Hopefully, in this guy's future, hopefully, he has a girlfriend in his future. And an upgrade, and he'll be a very happy snake. Until then, he is a gorgeous display animal. And a soup, and one of my dream pet, spe pet snakes. And finally, to the, to the left of death is Autumn. She's my juvenile female corn snake, Pantherophus brutatus. She's a female, or at least I've been told. Yep. I don't actually know for certain, but hopefully she is, because that's what I've been calling her for the last year. Autumn is currently being housed in a 20 gallon long Zoomed terrarium. She has a substrate of aspen, which allows her to burrow, a cool hide, which she frequents, and she actually could be found inside right now, a large water dish, which is big enough for her to bathe in, a heat, a hot hide, as well as several plants, and just, they're all fake plants, which she likes to climb on, and speaking of, there she is right there. She is an albino. So she does, so she lacks many of the typical black coloration of many corn snakes, but she definitely, she's definitely a gorgeous animal. And I did just have her out recently, so we're not going to be taking her out for the video. But there she is. I'll definitely insert some footage of her when she was younger. And that is Autumn.